morning guys, welcome back to Caramel Circus. George here. Um, I'm on a mission this year to explore more of the UK. Today's trip, we are at Warwick Castle. by the way, um, Warwick Castle is owned by Merlin Entertainment, so the same people who own like Thorpe Park, Alton Towers, Legoland. So if you are a Merlin pass holder, you will pass counts of entry in here. Oh, we are starting with Kingmaker, which is an exhibit about um, well, medieval England and the preparations for the Battle of Barnet. You may be able to hear some of it, it's quite loud. Just go learn stuff. Yeah, so here we go, here we've got weapons being made, armour. I can't smell anything yet. It is supposed to smell in this um, walkthrough bit, um, although it might be because I'm wearing a mask. Yes, by the way, apologies if muffled. I am masked up by the time you watch this. I probably won't be required anymore, but at the time of filming it is, so we are masked. Oh, got a light bit. Ooh. Here we go, all loaded up, ready for battle. What oh, cat! <laughs> So we've just read some stuff about it, and these guys are some of the archers who were able to fire around 12 hours a minute, which is pretty impressive. This kid sitting up here on top of the car, his job was to retrieve um, old arrows based upon the battlefield so they could be used for somebody else. Um, he would have been expected to take them out of bodies. What a nice job. Yeah, I have no idea how much this you were able to see. I apologise if it's just dark as heck. It is very dark in here. <laughs> but yeah, this is the cannon, or where the cannon would be loaded. Here it is. You can see it at all. So the piece of castle we've just come out of, that dark bit I'm showing you with the cannon, um, is part of Warwick Castle. That was the oldest parts of the existing building. So like a lot of castles, it's been rebuilt and added on to messing around with a lot over the years. Um, yeah, and that particular part has been there since the first stones were laid for this castle back in the 1200s. Oh look, this bedroom's got some more sweet. Great. Oh, found the buffet. Snack anybody? Saddle your horses, temper your weapons, prepare for the great and decisive battle. God and the right, God for the king, God for King Henry! Uh, we've now come into the Great Hall, which yeah. is pretty impressive. Look at the chandelier, isn't that cool? Gorgeous. Lots of armour and stuff to see in here. Horses. Wow. I've just been reading about this wooden back piece here, which has got like a table and oh, it's huge. You see all this mounting bit. This whole thing is made out of one oak tree, which is pretty impressive, which uh, came from the grounds of Cannonworth Castle. And it's got uh, figures of some pretty important folks on here. So we've got, if I get it the right way around, yeah, Francis Drake in the end here, Shakespeare, and we've got Walter Riley and Philip Sidney, which is pretty cool. We've also got these bears and stars, which was part of the quest of the medieval Earls of Warwick, and those can be spun round, which is pretty cool. <laughs> pretty impressive. So, if I can get to a bit where the light's not reflecting too much. Uh, after a free, for a while, the, uh, the Earls of Warwick were part of the Gravel family. This is Sir Fulke Gravel, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, who uh, was the first of the Gravel family to be Earl of Warwick here. And during the 20th century, the family claimed that he haunted the castle mostly through this portrait. Um, that actually wasn't true, they just said that to make people interested in visiting the castle. There they go. <laughs> Spooky portrait. Or not. Oh wow. I like the chandeliers. Let's have that at home. Look at this. Portraits. And how is that for a dining table? My god. Wow. This is spectacular. There's quite a lot of light coming through this window, so bits of it's getting quite dark. Oh, there you go, it's adjusting now. Look at that fireplace. Wow. When you're visiting places like this, always look up. Look at this ceiling. Right. So, the room we're in now is the green drawing room. I'm not going to tell you where it is. I'll save that if you come here yourself. But somewhere in here, there is a secret door opens out onto a stone staircase that goes down to the boat below. Cool, huh? 
this is probably really uneducated of me, but one of my favourite things about old art is artists painting animals they've clearly never seen before. Look at these creepy ass lions. I zoom in so you can see the faces, but what the, what is that? I mean, they've got long flowing hair. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. We've been invited to a royal weekend party. Just got off to a fancy guest. Including this guy in the middle here. Well, the young Winston Churchill. Cool. Found a hostess for the weekend. This is Daisy Gravel, the fifth Countess of Warwick. She was known for throwing very fancy parties. But she was also a mistress of Edward the Seventh. There you go. Here's Daisy's husband. I think they're Warwick. A lot more masculine women here, including another terrifying lion. Here he is, Edward. Uh, at this point, uh, when this royal weekend party is set, Prince of Wales, but he would go on to become King Edward VII. He's known for having quite a lot of mistresses, including Daisy, who is Countess of Warwick. We settle down to watch The Falconer's Quest, which is the falconry show here, not surprisingly. Um, if you want to sit on the benches, which I'll say in a second, um, do get here early. We're here about. It. Yeah, about sort of 20 15 minutes before the show actually starts, and all the benches are already taken. Obviously, at the moment, again, like at the time of filming, um, all the uh, COVID restrictions still in place, so they've had to distance people out, only some of the benches are open, um, so they are filling up quicker than normal. But even so, I think they will go fast. Obviously, in a day like today, sitting on the grass is fine, there's loads of seeing, so you won't struggle to find some space to sit on the grass even distance at the moment. But yeah, if it is a, a wetter day or you struggle with getting up from sitting yeah, on the floor. Thank you. Get to it early. Get on the bench. Yeah. I think though, despite being on the grass, we've got a pretty good spot. We're pretty much smack in front of the uh, where the guy is going to be over here for the Falconry show. And there's one of the like landing posts for the birds is right behind us too. So I think we're going to be in a good spot. A little boat has appeared. I think this might be our falconer. Here comes something. My countrymen believe barn owls bring good fortune, and Hobby wanted to bring this bird to the castle, as he believed it would bring oh, him luck goes. on his quest. Beautiful. Wow. Oof. It's just, there's a seagull, he's just settled on top of the roof of the building, you can see him, dark colour there. Incredible bird, there he goes. This was to be a test. Wow. Here, goes. Here he comes. He's going to come this over his wolf. There he is. Whoosh. <laughs> water. Fish. This doesn't look very medieval. Hobby scans the skies. Two of them. Ooh. Oh my god, incredible. Wow. He's going to come over us. Oh, gorgeous animal. I can't have got a Harry Hawk stuck in a tree. I say stuck, he's just decided he's sitting in the shade. Instead of interacting with these keepers, thanks very much. Look, he's going to reappear. That's hilarious. There he goes. Comes. Oh my god. Woo! <laughs> wow. Here he comes. Woo! <laughs> wow. That he also wished to see the skies above the castle fall once more with birds of prey. Both Hobby and I were welcome. That bit's very show it might be the most spectacular one I've ever seen. I've seen a few, but I don't think I've ever been that close to the birds as they're flying, apart from the time I to Falconry class at Centre Park, so that's the closest I've ever been to Bird of Prey, obviously. But yeah, that was really something special. Highly recommend that. So good. Very cool. 
Um, I'm just hanging out now while my dad come back. Dave's come back to the car to get the picnic. Um, there are a couple of restaurants actually here at Warwick Castle. There's also loads of little food stalls around. Um, dotted about, it's cool. There's a couple of bits that's for like, and like nice ones too, not standard kind of crap tourist attraction food. There's like a pizza thing and waffles, fish and chips, but you were also able to bring in your own your own stuff, which is obviously much cheaper, so that's what we've done. Um, I'm just trying out watching the archer while I'm waiting. It's pretty cool. <laughs> climbed up Conqueror's Fortress, which is the oldest part of the castle. There's a big mound here, which is yeah the oldest surviving bit of any of the structures that are here, which is where there originally was a Mott and Bailey castle, which was built by William the Conqueror in 1068. So and obviously after that the castle's been through a lot of changes and been messed around with it a lot through history, but it's still pretty cool. We will go down and have a proper look at it, but there is the trebuchet. Very cool. Right, armed with the world's least slushed slushed. I don't care, it's still cold. It's really seven degrees. Um, but yeah, on with that, we are going to go and walk the ramparts. There's some pretty amazing views from the top. This is what we're about to tackle. Hope the views are worth it. Ooh, that is quite a climb. But you are rewarded with some pretty spectacular views. So there's the old fort part where we were. That's the bit where we were for the weekend party. There's state rooms. Kingmaker back over there. Beautiful rolling fields from the other side, which I'll show you in a second. You can see Warwick. Some very pretty little cottages just in front of us. From the river, there's some boats going along. Just gorgeous. Okay, these views over the town. Gorgeous. Warwick is a very, very pretty little place. So we've come over the other side of the river from where the castle and the fountain show was and over here they've got this rather cool little setup which is unfortunately still closed at the moment but by the time you see this we will have opened up again where they have the Water of the Roses shows which judging by the setup I assume involves jousting and we're also by the trebuchet. Pretty cool. We're going to leave our adventure at Warwick Castle here but first of all I've got five quick tips for you uh, to make the most out of your visit. Tip one, get here early. Um, he's doing some holidays when we're here at the moment, so it is busy. <coughs> Peacock agrees with me. <laughs> um, yeah, it gets busy, so get here for doors. Um, at the moment, it opens at 10, but check and try and be here pretty much at open time if you can, and you'll have a much nicer experience. Tip number two, do the inside stuff first. There are three big indoor walk or in indoor walkthrough things. You've got the Kingmaker, you've got the Royal Wuthering Party, and the state rooms. Again, because it gets busier later, you're better off doing these, first of all, when they're a lot less crowded, so you can actually stop, read things, look at everything, rather than peering over people's heads. Tip number three. Think twice about doing the ramparts. I actually highly recommend doing the rampart walk. It's amazing, there's great views, it's fabulous, but it is tough. So make sure that you are actually gonna be able to do it. It is one way, so once you start going through, you that's kind of it. There are a couple of points where you can get out early, but by that point you've already had to do the biggest climb, which is the big tower. Um, yeah, they don't recommend that anybody has any kind of heart condition, anybody who's pregnant, anything like that does, does this climb. So make sure that you're ready to do it. There's around about 500 steps they are steep, they are narrow, they are dark. So it's it's incredible views, but make sure you're prepared if you're gonna do that. And wear sensible shoes. I've seen people go up and down in flip flops and it ain't pretty. <laughs> Tip for number four, definitely go and see the Birds of Prey show, the Falconer's Quest, it is incredible. Um, I would recommend doing the second show of the day. We snuck in and saw both. Um, and they flew slightly different birds for the second one. They um, they don't fly the eagle owl in the morning because he's a little bit temperamental apparently, so they tend to save him for the second show. We also found the second show was a lot quieter. It might just be because of the heat today if people are giving up early. But yeah, get there early so you can get a good seat. But yeah, check out the second show so you can see the eagle owl fly because he was a beaut. Last tip, tip number five, buy one of the country cups if you're here on a hot day like we are. All the little drinks kiosks sell these country cups. They're red plastic cups. They're about seven quid a pop but you can get free refills all day, so if it's hot they are well worth it, especially if you've got a few people with you. Buy one between you all and share it, basically, and you'll spend a lot less on drinks than you would otherwise. Alright, if you have enjoyed Warwick Castle, I we hope you have, give us a great big thumbs up, and if you subscribe, you can be here for the next lot of our adventures. Alright guys, see you next time. In the meantime, be good. Bye.